Hey, it's me, MLB. Here's chapter 53 of Chance Ball, and this one is titled Robber. Darby's experience with the law hadn't been the best in the past, so understandably he was a little tense. Is this the residence of a Miss Yin Lin? The first officer asked. You looked around from behind Darby. Yeah? You asked. Miss, do you work at the corner store up the road? He asked you. Yes, I do. Why? You asked suspiciously. We received a call that the place was being robbed and a staff member was being assaulted, the officer said. You blinked. Um, no, I'm fine. I was closing up tonight and there was no robber and I never got assaulted. I was there. I can verify her story, Darby said. The second officer looked at Darby and saw the black hoodie he was sporting. Just a second, sir, he said, pulling out his phone to check some details of the alleged robber. Sir, he paused and then looked up at Darby. Did you go behind the counter at any point of your time in the corner store this evening? Yeah, Darby asked. The officer nodded. Miss Yin, are you and this man here? Name's Darby. Darby, in a relationship? The officer asked you. You nodded. Yeah, he's my boyfriend. The officers looked at each other and then back to you and Darby, still standing there clueless at the door. I don't understand, you deadpan. What's going on? Just then Darby started to chuckle deeply, then a little louder, but the first officer cut him off before he could say anything else. Do you also work at the store? The officer asked him sternly. <laughs> nah, he replied with a smirk. The only thing I was trying to steal from the store was her. He pointed at you. Me? You asked with confusion. You are aware that if you are a customer, you are not allowed in staff areas. That also includes behind the counter, even if your girlfriend is working. It was then that it clicked for you. Oh, wait, you thought he was robbing the place, you asked, remembering fighting him off the till and realising how suspicious it must have looked. Then you started to chuckle as well. Consider this a warning, the second officer said, not appreciating the laughter from you and Darby. Next time, it's a fine for unnecessary involvement in the law, entering an unauthorised area and assault if the miss here wishes to press charges. He glanced at you. We saw a small portion of the recorded footage from the past buyer who called emergency services. Your face felt a little hotter when you imagined what it must have looked like. We're in a loving, healthy relationship, you blurted out, grabbing Darby's hand. I promise. The officer nodded and then took a step back. Very well. We'll be going now. Thank you for your concern, you added to the departing policeman. You waited till they'd both hopped back into their car and then turned to Darby as he closed the door. You're a criminal, you deviant. How dare you molest me and rob the store? I'm about to reenact the footage again right here. He leered, pulling on your hand so that you fell into him. Now, where were we? Your pants were hurriedly pushed to the floor. The next morning, early, before Saturday classes, you ran to the nearest drugstore to get yourself the morning after pill, making sure to take it this time. I still want to make babies with him, but soon. Not quite yet. You took it right there and then out the front of the store and then hauled ass to college. Darby was paying you more attention that day and kept giving you smouldering looks every time you stole a look at him in class and you'd reply his look with either your tongue poking out or some kind of other obscene gesture. What else does that tongue do? He texted you under the table in class after you'd poked your tongue out at him for the fifth time. It sings praises to Jesus, can I get an amen? He texted back. I could make a good girl go wild, he replied. Now I practice your psalms. No thanks, Satan, he replied playfully. Side note, if Satan asked you on a date, would you say yes? He sent. What? You want to go on a date tomorrow? Love Satan. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Are you going to bring your pitchfork? He texted, glancing at him from the corner of your eye. Depends. Will you let me <laughs> your <laughs> with it? Your mouth fell open as you read his message. Darby, he texted back. That's terrible. So is that a yes? Or... He sent, giving you a leering look. You're the worst. Yeah, sure. Done. Breakfast. Cool. Yin, I do hope you're paying attention in class, the teacher suddenly called when he saw that you were on your phone, even though you'd tried to hide it under the table. Yep, you replied quickly, hiding your phone as quickly as possible. You heard Darby snigger from beside you, and you shot him a glare which he returned with a middle finger scratched to the cheek. This dick, you scowled, looking away to hide your smile. I hate him so freaking much. After class, you got up and gave Darby an annoyed look, well, one as annoyed as you possibly could, and then stuck your nose in the air and turned to leave, making him scramble to follow you. Hey, he called after you as you walked out. You ignored him. Hey, sex on legs. Shut up, you got me in trouble, you called back to him, hiding your smile. Suddenly his arms were around your waist, 
and you squealed with glee as he lifted you up, paying no heed to the other college students who all stepped aside to let you and Darby muck around in the hall. Should I take you here in the hall? He growled into your ear as he turned you to the wall and pushed you up against it. Stop, you criminal. Don't forget that you almost got jailed for life. It's a slight exaggeration. He scoffed, stepping back as you elbowed him back. As you turned to push him away with your hands, his eyes strayed to a poster on the wall and his attention immediately followed as he read the first line. Couples, teams, a chance to win big. He paused and you saw he was looking at something else, so turned to see what had taken his attention off you. Silently, you read the poster. Caputo College is now accepting tryouts for a new partnered team. Have you got what it takes? Yo, we could totally try out for that. We're so in sync. We even finish each other's... You waited for Darby to respond. So when he didn't, you cleared your throat and tried again. We even finish... Each other. Yeah, I heard you, babe. And if you didn't finish, I'd go down you and... Oh my God, Darby, stop! You groaned, smacking your hand over your eyes. You were supposed to say sandwiches. What? What the hell does sandwiches have to do with it? No, wait, sentences, not sandwiches. Ugh. Do you need me to go down on you? You're not making any sense. He replied with a smirk. That is not going to help. You replied with an eye roll. Anyway, so we're going to try out for the partner team? We could win. You looked back at the poster and started reading some of the finer print. Wait, you squinted your eyes as you read one line in particular. Guys only? What? Darby asked, leaning in to see the line that you'd just read. It says here, guys only, male only partnership. Huh? What kind of sexist crap is this? I can play. If I want to play, then I want to play. You stated firmly, arms crossed in defiance. Who cares? Just play. Darby said with a shrug, wear a binder and an oversized shirt. You turned your head and looked at him. He looked at you, and then you slowly both smirked. Need me to drop you off at the shops this afternoon? He asked, still smirking. Yeah, you replied, holding up your palm so he could slap it. Then you both looked back at the poster. What do you reckon? You asked Darby, stepping out of the change room with a few tight singlet shirts on that were bunched under your bus line to make your front look more flat, covered in a loose shirt. Mm, yeah. He nodded, thumb and index finger under his chin to support it. With that, it'll pass. Or I could shave my head. You just looked at each other. It's your head, he replied nonchalantly, dropping his hands to his hips while shrugging. You do whatever you like. Let's get this dough, he replied with a smirk, turning back into the change room to get out of the clothes. Back at home, you held scissors in hand, staring at yourself in the mirror with a determined look on your face. Are you going to do it? Darby asked from the doorway behind you. Shut up, I'm thinking. You've been there for 45 minutes and you have work soon, he commented calmly. I said, I'm thinking. Time's ticking. Don't rush me. It's been 45 minutes. Go and do something else with your life, will you? I need a moment. You snapped at him. A whole 45 minutes worth of... Go before these scissors end up between your eyes. You growled at him. Kinky. Okay, I'm going to make dinner. He turned and smartly walked off. You looked at yourself in the mirror again. Oh, I can't do this. I have to be able to live a double life. So maybe if I just tie my hair up into a bun or something and then do some makeup or make my eyebrows a little lower and bushier. Placing the scissors down on the side of the sink, you got out your trusty makeup kit and got to work. Once you finished, you nodded to your male altar in the mirror and walked back to the bedroom to get one of Darby's hoodies. Channeling your best masculine self, you sauntered down the stairs into the kitchen to look for Darby. Oi, you grunted as he stepped in with your head lowered. Darby turned and froze when he saw you, for a second not recognising you. You looked up at him and smirked. What's up, dude? Oh, hell, didn't even recognise you yet. Darby said in awe, I'm not Yin, I'm G. Call me G. Very convincing. Darby mused, putting his utensils down to walk over for a better look. He took your chin in his hand and tilted your face up so he could see your features better and turned your face this way and that to check you out a little more. You've almost changed your facial structure with that makeup, he said. Now I just have to convince people without the hoodie, he said, pushing it off. Darby stepped back and checked you out. Mm, yeah, it'll pass. You just have a real baby face. Shut up! Chicks are going to hit on you. So, what if I like that? What if I flirt back? You know I'm only open to a threesome if it's with you and a copy of you, Darby replied. Plus, what happened to the hair? Thought you were going to cut it, but it's still there. It's going to look mad sus if I turn up to class with a bald head all of a sudden. I need to look like a dude and a chick all in one, so I'm going to be going with a man bun. Binder, baggy clothes, and makeup. Okay, well... We'll see how it goes. Tryouts are on Monday, two weeks' time. Darby replied, 
but you've got to get your ass to work now. So, oh crap, you gasp, glancing at your watch as you turn tail and race back upstairs to get the makeup off. Sunday morning was date morning, so after waking up to Darby with his head between your legs, you got up, had a shower, and then went out for a much needed date together. Anywhere in particular you want to go? You asked him. Pancakes. He replied, where though? I don't know, just pancakes. You chuckled to yourself and read the different cafe signs out the front of the shops as you passed, looking for somewhere that sold pancakes. There, you pointed excitedly. Pancakes. And there ends that chapter. Stay tuned for chapter 54 coming tomorrow. I'll see you then.